morning. Good morning, everybody. Uh, great to see you here. So this is our HKCPD hub, uh, last event uh, of the uh, academic year. Um, so welcome, everybody. We have colleagues uh, from Hong Kong, mostly from Hong Kong, um, and some colleagues from other places, uh, they heard about this event, uh, even though we didn't particularly send out promotional information to them, I guess they um, knew about it from our social media and also because of attending our conference in January, right? So welcome everybody. Uh, we should be um, expecting, I guess, around 60 people, we have over 60 uh, registrants. So welcome and good morning. So uh, today we have Professor Lawrence Anthony with us. So some of you um, have met him and attended his workshop last week. So I guess we all agreed that that was really insightful and excellent. Some of you uh, who come today and not in our last session might have heard about it, uh, the last session from our colleagues. So welcome here. So Professor uh, Lawrence Anthony is Professor of Applied Linguistics at the Faculty of Science and Engineering in Waseda University, Japan. So he has background in both the sciences and uh, the uh, Applied Linguistics. So in fact, uh, his undergraduate degree, um, he did something on, um, uh, no, sorry. I, I didn't know what his undergraduate degree uh, topic was, but, um, but it was in a degree about uh, uh, mathematics and physics. But then I, from his website, I noticed that his MA degree that was on genre analysis. And so his PhD, he created software to do um, discourse analysis. So his uh, research interests are in corpus linguistics, educational technology, ESP program design and teaching methodologies. I believe that a lot of us have heard about his end series of software. So um, I believe that he might also be introducing some of them to us today. Last week he did, and um, and he did some demonstrations for us. And uh, we all thought that, wow, we got him uh, doing it for us. So that was much clearer. So we really look forward to uh, the webinar and uh, workshop today. So now I hand over the time to Professor Lawrence Anthony. Thank you very much, Liam, for that very nice introduction. And thank you, everybody, for coming today for, to this session um, early in the morning for some of you, 9.30 over there and 10.30 here in Japan. Uh, it's a real honor to be able to do this uh, series. And um, I hope you were able to come last week uh, to the talk on writing. But if you weren't, um, I'm going to be treating the talk today as if you haven't been come, you, that you didn't come last week. So you won't, you won't be missing out on, on anything today. Uh, so uh, we do have a three hour session. I'm going to uh, try and add some breaks in uh, um, probably every hour. I'll try and get about five minutes break in. Um, uh, last week, people said that they would have liked a little bit more discussion. So I've, I've uh, introduced a little bit more discussion today. And because it is a presentation uh, seminar, uh, it is nice to be able to see your faces. And um, when we do do some breakout group work, you definitely will need to turn your videos on at that point if you can, if you can. If you can't, it's okay. But it's definitely much better to be able to see the audience when you're presenting. And it's also, um, it's good for them to see the presenter as well, of course. Okay, so we're looking today at um, presentation skills. Now, I'm gonna share my screen. Um, I hope that you'll have your own Zoom set up so that you can see my face as well as the slides I'm gonna be showing you. Uh, it's really important to be able to see both today. So definitely try and make sure that you can do that. Um, so just a moment, let me share my screen. So at the moment, um, you should be able to see what I can see. Can you, can you see that, Lynn? You can see the screen of everybody's there. Yeah, that's great. So this is what I normally see. Uh, and when I teach presentation skills online, mute. Sorry. Was I, was I muted the whole time? Was I muted the whole time just now? No, we, we, we heard you. 
Okay, somebody somebody just muted me and then muted me. Well, that's interesting. Okay, so everybody, well, um, you can see the screen of all your faces here. And as, as I was saying, it's really important in a presentation session to be able to see the to the audience. And that means in the classroom setting, it's also important that you can see the students when you're giving your own explanations. So um, my setup here is a little bit more complicated than normal, but I have three monitors here. Now you don't have to have three, but definitely having two helps. And the reason is because I'm gonna now move you and you'll be able to see me moving you. You can see that, right? I'm gonna move you over to a different window. So now I can see you over here. And you are now looking at this blank canvas and this is my desktop, a blank canvas that I can use to then show slides and so on. So I could drag in my slides like this, like that. And if in a presentation, again, in a presentation session, you're often interacting with the slides, but actually showing how to design slides and showing how animation works and, and so on. Things like showing the animation pane and showing how that works. So it's really important to be able to just go out of the, the, the slide itself and be able to show windows, show YouTube videos and so on. So this is my setup. And I think it's a, a, right from the beginning, this is a good point to kind of remember to not share the screen, but to share the actual desktop, giving you a canvas that you can bring things into and out of you can drag people's faces in and out, and it just makes it generally makes things a lot smoother. And it also means that I can always see you guys. When I look to my left, I can see uh, May and I can see Mabel listening and uh, Nimrod. Uh, uh, is that right, Nimrod? I can see you there. But I can also then share my slides as well, which I'll do right now. Just a second. Okay. So, <clears throat> just a second. Okay, so you should now be able to see my full screen now, and this is my uh, main window here. So we're going to talk about developing and delivering presentation courses for the disciplines. Um, I do have slides, which um, I, yeah, you can show you here. I do have slides, and um, uh, I will be uploading these to the uh, to the Google Drive that Lynn has set up later after the session is finished i'll upload those but you'll also see already some task um, materials that we'll be using during the session okay oh and just one more thing i want to do um oh no that's okay let's just leave it like that for now okay so uh first uh, let me give you a quick overview of the three-hour seminar so first i'm going to give some basic concepts um, about what esp is english for specific purposes i'll talk about the four pillars of course design and then refer to how we, re we can apply these ideas in the design of pres presentation skills courses. If you came last week, don't worry, I'm not gonna repeat everything I said last week. I'll, I'll condense this discussion a little bit today. Then we'll talk about course design for discipline specific presentation skills. I'm gonna give you a proposal that I um, adopted at our university for third year undergraduate courses in science and engineering, but I think the same course design could be applied in pretty much any field. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about management strategies. And then like we did last week, I'm gonna show three different case studies of how to teach presentation skills in um, uh, looking at first how to talk about common mistakes, how to talk about starting a presentation, and then a, a, a discussion about how to explain figures and tables. These are just uh, examples of the kinds of things that you could be introducing into a presentation class. And um, I hope you'll take the kind of fundamental principles that I'm going to be demonstrating here and then maybe apply them in your own teaching. OK, uh, we do have some hands on tasks. Um, the first will be discussing the challenges of discipline specific course design. Maybe the most important discussion is the first one. I hope you can kind of discuss what kind of classes you currently teach, what challenges you have, and maybe discuss possible ways to address those challenges. Then we'll talk about um, one minute presentations. This is maybe the key, one of the key strategies that I adopt in my classes to, to allow everybody to be presenting a lot. Um, I'll talk about that later. Then um, you'll have a chance to uh, deliver and evaluate a one minute presentation from another participant today. So you're gonna be presenting today as um, taking the role as a, t a student. 
um, and see how it goes and see what kind of difficulties you have as a student presenting in this way and as a teacher how you would evaluate that, account, that kind of performance. And then last is a discussion about creating materials for table, figure and table explanations. Okay, and then Q&A at the end. Okay, so just to start though, I did ask you all to complete a survey last week or a couple of weeks ago. And um, I just want to show you the results of that because they're quite interesting. So first, what is your own discipline special specialization? And as I expected, most of us in this, in this seminar are not experts in mathematics, physics, chemistry, maybe economics, medical studies, nursing. Most of us are in coming from an area of applied linguistics or linguistics or, and we even have here general English. I'm not sure exactly how that's a specialization, but you can see that we're all basically in the area of English, which is a problem, of course, when we're trying to teach discipline specific presentation skills, because they're not necessarily the same as what we experience in our conferences. I also asked what are the most common discipline specializations of your students and again as expected we have business and economics political science science and engineering social sciences is closer to us and then many of you said we i teach across the university so a huge range of disciplines here so again that introduces a problem or a challenge because if our background is uh, applied linguistics i'll turn on my pointer here if um if our background is applied linguistics, then what are we going to teach these students and how, how can we have confidence that what we're teaching is correct? And I'll come back to that later. Now, two questions that kind of cause some a little bit of confusion to some of you. Uh, the first question was, have you ever seen a conference presentation in one or more of the target disciplines? And you'll see here that over half of you said no you have never seen a conference presentation that the students have to give. That raises a kind of concern for me because if we're supposed to be teaching discipline specific presentation skills and we've never seen a presentation in that discipline, how can we possibly teach it? Basically, I don't think we can because we don't know what it's like. It's, we, we can teach what, how we present, we can teach how our discipline presents, but if you've never seen a conference presentation in the target area, that's a real problem. It's, it, it introduces kind of confidence issues that you don't know what you're talking about. And students will probably identify the fact that you've never seen one of their conference presentations because what you're saying is wrong. So definitely, if there's one thing to take away from today is go away and watch one of the presentations from the target disciplines that you teach. If you're in science and engineering, just go to a typical science and engineering presentation or watch one on YouTube and I'll talk about that later. And ideally though, go to a conference for one day, register and go to it. Seeing one conference presentation in that field will enlighten you in what you need to be teaching in the classroom. And I also asked, have you ever given a conference presentation in one of the target fields? Some of you got confused and thought, am I teaching you how to give these presentations? No, we are teachers of presentation skills. The reason for asking, have you ever given one of these presentations is if you answer no, as 90% of you did, it means that you don't really know how it feels to present in that discipline. You don't know the, the, the aspects that the students have to cons be concerned about, the professors and the other the audience members, the kinds of questions that will come. It's really important to have some as much experience of the target discipline and the target presentation that you can. Definitely watch one. Watching is enough in some way. You can see what happens. And as a, an expert in language, you can identify the patterns and the difficulties and then teach some of those skills and strategies to students. But if you can also maybe even work with somebody, like do a, co a collaborative project and actually present in that field, you will be enlightened even more about what actually happens, how the presentation is constructed, who delivers the presentation, and so on. So that's why I asked those questions. Um, what is the greatest challenge when teaching this type of course? And we had a lot of um, comments here. Um, uh, some of you talked about the student attitudes, like 
um, not taking the presentation seriously or not thinking presentation skills are important. Uh, and then, then there was a question about the students going into too much detail, but not describing the general problem that they're working on. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about student attitude later. My general feeling is that students think their presentations are important, but they just don't know how to improve. But if you do have an attitude problem with students, then in the beginning of the course, start out in the first lesson explaining the importance of presentations. And I'll talk about that a bit later as well. There are some comments about discipline dis differences. And again, that relates to what I've just been talking about. If you see a presentation in the target discipline, you'll know so much more about the differences that can happen. And then there's um, some comments about uh, course design. And many of you are saying that it's not your what you teach is not discipline specific. And this actually relates to last week's seminar as well. It, in the writing seminar, it seemed that many people are teaching kind of general EAP, not actually discipline specific writing. And I guess many of you are teaching general presentation skills, not actually discipline specific presentation skills. And it relates again to the fact that you may not even know what those differences are. Okay, so I'm going to talk about some of these. Um, you had some questions. Um, how can I make my teaching more discipline specific? Well, that's for today's, uh, that's the main goal of today. So I hope you'll learn something there. Something on pre poster presentations, I'm definitely talking about that. And then somebody talked about, um, oh, were you asking about us or about the students? And it's definitely about students. Okay, so let's talk about some basic concepts um, that we can apply to all course design whether it's writing or presentation. Um, and this refers to what I talked about last week, but I will shorten the discussion brief uh, a little bit here. Okay, so first, um, I'm gonna be referring to a book that I wrote called Introducing English for Specific Purposes, which introduces basically these core ideas and then shows how they can be applied in different areas. Um, but ESP or English for specific purposes is often misunderstood to be like targeting just the language of a very narrow discipline and it's all technical, but I don't think that's a good definition. So here's mine. So ESP is an approach to language teaching. It's language teaching in the, uh, that targets the current or future academic or occupational needs of learners. So what do they need? And that's what we focus on. And it focuses on the necessary language, the genres, the skills to address these needs. So it's not just language, it also relates to skills and so on. And it assists learners in meeting these needs through the use of general and or discipline specific teaching materials and methods. So we do have an opportunity to use general English teaching in an ESB context. It really depends on what the goal is and what the, what, how specific that goal is in some way. And this relates to the ESB specificity continuum that I wrote about back in 2012, and it also refers to Dudley Evans's work in 98. But if you think about the content of a class, whether it's presentation or writing, you can think of kind of general ESP on the left. And that just means like EAP in many senses, academic listening, note-taking, visualizing data, talking about results in a very general sense. Then in the, in, in the intermediate level, we have maybe research article writing or conference presentations. So not just presenting, but conference presentations, which are more specific than like just, just talking. And then we have these very specialized DSP areas like machine specifications, customer support interactions, product fair demonstrations, for example, which are very specific and require knowledge of the field at a quite deep level. So ESP covers all of this continuum. And where are you? In your classes, are you just talking about, you know, speaking in front of people, explaining results in a very general sense, or are you looking at actual conference presentations in physics and chemistry and mathematics? Are you at the far end looking at how to give a product demonstration in a product fair in, in some country. I think many of us are actually in this general ESP area and there you can use general English methods and techniques, but I wanna really focus on discipline specific 
language. And that really means we're in the middle area, maybe even the far right here. So when we think about the ESP content and we, as we go further to the right, we actually have less and less knowledge about the target area. And that's a challenge that we all have to deal with. So on the left, when we kind of have confidence about what we're doing and know, know what we're talking about, we can run a fairly teacher-centered classroom. I mean, it's not, we can also have a student-centered classroom, but we can initiate things as a teacher and show students, this is how you can present, this is how you discuss results and so on. But as we go further to the right, it becomes more difficult to do that. So you might want to kind of consider having the student lead the class in some way that they bring in their example presentations, they bring in what they want to do, they discuss what they need to do, and then you respond to the students with some advice and ideas. And then they can respond to those ideas with like, oh, that's good, or oh, that's not right because, and kind of shift the classroom focus a little bit more to what the students are doing and what they need rather than telling them what to do, especially if you're not sure. Okay, so that's the um, continuum. And it relates also to this um, aspect of ESP course teams. As a teacher of ESP, we really don't know everything that's going on. So I think it's quite dangerous to start trying to create all the materials, go into the classroom, telling the students everything that's happening, evaluating them all. It's probably better to involve more people in the design of these courses. So first, of course, we have administrators on the left here. They may be experts in the field, they may be discipline professors, talk to them, ask them what they think the students need in the classroom. Ask them to show you examples of what the students present and give look at slides that they've created and so on. And of course, the students also have presentation experience, ask them what they found difficult in the class. What did they find difficult when they presented before? When they went to a conference in their field, what did they notice? And so on. So don't think it's all about yourself. Try to involve everybody as a, in a team effort. Okay, the four pillars of ESP course design are needs, language and learning objectives, uh, I'll show you here, needs, language and learning objectives, materials and methods, and evaluation. Kind of, in some sense, fairly obvious. In, um, but when we think about needs, first, so who is in the classroom? Where are you teaching? Is it online or is it in a real classroom? Are you, when are you teaching it? Is it in the morning or the afternoon, which makes it, the energy levels of students can vary? Or it could be at night, online for them, whereas you're teaching in the morning on the video. So, and also why are you teaching? So just basic questions about what you're doing. Once you know the needs, then you can start thinking about objectives about in the classroom. What are you gonna actually teach? And again, it comes back to experience. If you've never seen a target presentation, you've never, if you've never given a target presentation, it can be quite difficult to determine what those learning objectives should be. And then we turn to materials and methods. And again, with discipline specific presentations, we have a, a challenge to create authentic materials that the students will be able to use effectively. And then how do you evaluate presentations when you've never, if they're doing presentations in microbiology and you don't understand the content on the screen, how can you evaluate them? And we'll come back to these issues from now. So needs first. Uh, many people think that needs are basically what the students want to do in the classroom. And that's very far from what I think needs really are. First, you need to think about the stakeholders. So administrators, teachers, and students. What, who are they first? And do you speak to them? Do you talk to them? And if so, great. Then you can ask them, what do they want? What do the stakeholders want in terms of the course goals? administrators have course goals that they want you to address or they have some target grades or they have some specific content that they want you to work with. What do, what do the stakeholders lack? So obviously administrators may lack money for more teachers or lack space. You may lack time or energy or experience in the field and students of course lack time and energy and knowledge and experience and so on. So first identify what the wants are and the lacks because then you can work out what they 
need, not the, what are their necessities. So then once you know what they can do and what they can't do, you can start thinking about, okay, here are the minimum grades. This is the minimum amount of work I can ask the students to do. And these are the minimum scores that they should be able to achieve. And once you get to that point, then you can start thinking about language and learning objectives for the classroom. Don't start with an idealized view of the course, start with the real world of lacks and wants, and then start thinking about the course design. So what language and skills should students learn in the classroom? What about in other classes? They may already be doing presentations in their specialist disciplines. What about outside of class at homework for homework? And should they be learning just from you or from other students or maybe just online materials? Go to YouTube and watch some videos. And what language and skills will they find easy to learn? And that means maybe they could do it at home on their own. Or what about skills that are difficult to learn and that would probably need more in direct instruction from you or maybe support from other students in the classroom? So maybe through group discussion and so on. So think about these language and learning objectives. And I'll give you a proposal for objectives in a moment. Um, but how do we identify the needs and objectives for presentation skills in disciplines? Well, of course, we have textbooks. There's multiple textbooks ar around that you can learn from. The Craft of Scientific Presentations is a great book by Michael Ali, which I often use. But you can even find books like Presentation Skills for Science and Scientists and Engineers. If you're in business, there's lots of business presentation books. They could be textbooks, but they could also be just general um, discussions about presentations. There's also journals which talk about presentations, but not as much as writing. Writing seems to be the common topic. But if you look in the ESP journal or EAP journal, or even like an IEEE journal, professional communication, you will find people discuss um, the, the fundamentals of presentations and they do research on good presentation skills. Of course, um, there's also, uh, the conference presentations itself. If you go to a conference, you'll, you'll be able to identify the needs and objectives after seeing what people actually do. Now, this conference, the IPRO, IEEE ProCom, is a, a conference on technical communication. So there's lots of talks at the conference on how to give good talks. <laughs> you can get that. But um, just go to any conference and you'll learn a lot. And of course, there's multiple websites that give lots of discussion about tips for good presentations, 10 ways to improve your presentation skills. And reading these um, 10 tips can help you identify common needs and work from there. OK, so when I start with my class, I always ask students um, a, a, to complete a survey. And you can see here that this is a very simple survey they ask. Um, what is your target discipline? Really important. Have you ever seen a target presentation? Have you ever given a target presentation? Same questions I asked you, but I asked the students these questions because I need to know what their experience is. And then what do you think is your main strength and main weakness when presenting? And that gives me an idea of some of their lacks and wants as well. If they feel that they're not very good at uh, pronunciation or they don't know how to design a slide, then I can focus on those points in the class. And then what questions do you have about presenting? A great question to ask for experienced students. So first year undergraduate students won't even know what that question means. They won't be able to ask anything about presenting because they've never done it and they don't know what to do. But if you talk to a third year student or a fourth year student or a graduate school student, they have presented in the past, they will have experienced problems, and they will have direct questions that they want answers to. So definitely ask them if they have questions. And here are some examples of questions that students ask. Uh, these are, again, third year, fourth year and graduate school students. What is the most important mindset? What is the difference between English and Japanese presentations? Is it okay to read or memorize a script? Can I use effective body language? Oh, sorry, how can I use effective body language? How can I make simple slides? How do I manage Q&A? When should I talk formal or informal style? And you can see that these questions are coming from experience. They've had a Q&A and they didn't do well in the Q&A. So how can I do a better Q&A? They know that when they talk, they don't move. So how can I improve my body language? And so on. 
They don't generally ask questions about language, interestingly. My students don't. Uh, they ask more about the skills and the mindset, but maybe what expressions can I use to link slides? What is good and bad about my English? <laughs> it's kind of really simple. How can I improve my presentation? Probably because in a real conference they were speaking and the audience didn't understand them. So um, definitely ask the students that kind of question. Okay, what ready-made materials and methods can we use? Well, again, we have lots of textbooks on presentations, a ton of textbooks on presentations. This is by one site, this was recommended to be the top out of like 30 textbooks on presenting, presenting to win, speaking PowerPoint. This one, The Secrets of Steve Jobs is a very popular book as, and I have Presentation Zen like somewhere behind me. Um, there's lots of textbooks that you can use to um, that in the classroom, but also to create the class. But something that stu uh, maybe teachers here don't use enough uh, basically online sites. There's a ton of very, very good material online now, especially through YouTube. Some of you probably have heard of TED. These, uh, these are very kind of famous people or, or um, kind of uh, dynamic presenters talking about a wide range of topics. But if you watch a TED video or show a TED video to students, they can get a good idea about body language, facial expressions, and the topics are usually fairly simple that everybody can understand. It's designed for a general audience, but you, they will see what international good presentation style looks like. Um, so definitely have a look at that. But not only that, you can go and find conferences in medical. This is a conference um, in engineering. This is a medical conference. You can watch a video of a medical conference and you can see a doctor here and she's presenting on some crazy difficult medical issues and watch it and see how they present, see what they are good at, see what they're not good at, show these to students and it can be really in useful for you and for them. You can also then consider creating your own custom materials and that's what we do at our university. I've, I've written a book called Presenting Research in Science and Engineering that just kind of targets my exact audience. But you can use handouts and vocabulary lists and so on. But you should also about, think about who should be controlling the learning. Um, is it, should you be running everything like here's the textbook, do this exercise, or again, should you have the students do more of the work in the classroom? And I do think both a balance of both is really quite good. Teachers, if they have a lot of experience, they can introduce students to a lot of new ideas. But if you lack experience, then you can ask the students to explain what is difficult. You could have them come in with a presentation they have given in the past and then in the class everybody looks at the presentation and then critiques it, improves it and so on. So it doesn't have to be always teacher controlled. Okay and finally evaluation, the last of the four pillars. So how well have the learners achieved the goals of the course? So you need goals for the course and they need to be clearly stated to the students and then how well do they achieve those? How well are the teachers how well have the teachers supported the learners? Are you helping them or actually holding them back? And how well have the administrators supported your teaching? So these are all aspects of evaluation. And you can also ask how happy with the course are the different people. Students may be happy but not learn anything, so that's a problem. But ideally they would learn a lot and also find it useful and enjoy it. And of course, what can be done to improve the course? And that's the last aspect. Okay, so I'm gonna, I've just quickly gone through these four pillars, but I want to now um, introduce a proposal for third year undergraduate presentation skills. And I'm, I'm gonna show this, and then I'm gonna ask you all to kind of consider this proposal and discuss the advantages and disadvantages and also some of the problems that you had. So just have a listen to this proposal and then we can discuss what you think about it. Okay, so um, a third year undergraduate course, this is for science and engineers, but it basically applies to all different fields. So I think it's really important, as we found from the survey at the beginning, to not only address the language of presentations, but the mindset of, of presentation, students. 
students sometimes don't think it's important to present or they don't understand why presentations are important and so i really want to start there so i have skills and strategies and first understand the importance of presentations and why they're difficult for people to do understand the audience and the purpose and the organization the flow the style and the delivery of presentations all the key fundamental factors of a good presentation how to design and clear and attractive visual aids like slides how to deliver the presentation by speaking from points not just reading a script or memorizing a script but speaking as most professionals do by looking at a slide and then talking to the audience and how to control nerves and deliver a presentation with confidence and authority and how to understand how to deal with questions so it's all strategy really it's not about language and it's not even about disciplines at this point it's more of the general fundamentals of good presentations but then i do switch to language because it is a language course that i'm teaching so how to tell the story of the project in a logical fashion background problem aim methods results and so on how to explain these sections the background purpose materials methods results discussion so when you're telling it's not about just explaining these different aspects but it's about telling it in a story fashion that means actually looking at the audience using i using you using active voice talking telling a story as if you know to engage the audience how to use citation and references how to use natural sounding linking phrases and expressions how to deliver with comprehensible pronunciation and again how to deliver the presentation with confidence and authority through language through language by using clear data using so sources using citation using references and so on okay so here's my course overview and again this is quite a general overview and it could apply to any discipline but we will come to discipline issues in a moment but first again the first part of the course for me is if it's say a 15 week course the first five weeks or four weeks maybe would be spent on skills and strategies the meaning of research the importance and challenges of presentations and then these key factors of audience purpose organization flow style and presentation and at that point i feel it's really useful to kind of get students to give a formal presentation that they can then improve on later for their final presentation at the end of the course so they would have a presentation here but focus not on language but more on the general skills that they need to be able to use and then we come to the presentation language aspect and titles and background and materials and methods and discussion results handling q a and then a, a final presentation where everything gets put together into this final form so that's the kind of basic overview that i think kind of makes a lot of sense to me but uh, maybe you can have some ways to improve that in terms of methods for this we use in my course we use an in-house textbook but of course you may not have that and you may want to create your own materials or use youtube videos or a textbook that would be completely fine too what i also have started doing and um, because of the covid 19 crisis is create a whole set of on-demand videos and i found these to be really good for students maybe the course is better now than in the past because of these videos you'll see here i have multicam video explanations now this is kind of important i feel you can see here sometimes i talk directly to the camera can you see that it's just a, a straight on me like speaking to you now straight on into the camera so i wouldn't be sharing so I'd, it'd be more like maybe like this if you hope you, you can see me now it would be like like this talking directly to the students and i'd be introducing the topic and explaining the importance and so on then i would switch and hopefully i can do this again and then i would switch into this second view which is kind of what you have now where we have the slide and i'm still there but in the corner do you see that so this is the materials that i'm using a lot now and i have a special um video switching device that means i can instantly switch from a full view to a in in slide view so i can quickly switch between the two but um we can talk about that a bit later 
So those are the materials. Basically, I use a, a custom textbook, but a regular textbook on presentations would com be completely fine. And then having class explanations, and then we have these student one minute presentations, which I'll talk about in a moment. In terms of evaluation, well, as I said, if we're looking at disciplines, we may not know what is good and bad. So it's really useful to have peer review, have students comment on their own presentations and other students' presentations as well. Student anonymous evaluation of key points for example, how well did they engage with the audience? How was their eye contact? What about slide design? Did you understand the content? Questions like that. And they also have teacher rubric based evaluations. So a combination of student evaluations and teacher evaluations. Um, really important for these discipline specific courses. In terms, uh, we use Moodle at uh, university and Moodle allows you to create very nice grading rubrics. So I can have a, a task for a student like presenting a title slide and I can create, I hope you can see this, I can create a rubric of all the points in that presentation that I expect them to have. And they know these rubrics. So greeting, did they say hi at the beginning if they're doing like a, presenting a title slide? Hi, I'm Lawrence Anthony, name. Affiliation. I'm from the I'm from Waseda University in Japan. Today I'm going to be talking about presentations in discipline specific contexts. And then situation and problem and response. How was their timing? Did they finish on time? Did their voice with the, was their voice clear? How did they deliver with body language and so on? So I can create a very nice rubric of all the points that I want to check. And very quickly in class, I can just use this online form to click, 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 click as I'm watching. Or later, I could watch the video of the students and again use these, these rubrics to click and grade the students. So very quick and easy. But I also recommend to consider student evaluations. And you could use an online randomized student peer review system, as I introduced last week, and one of my colleagues, Nakamura Chie, is using this approach. So you can set up a form that students can use to evaluate each other's presentations in an anonymous fashion, if you want. So there's a lot of online tools now to help you do this. OK, so our first discussion, everybody. OK, so. Um, I've just given you this very general um, picture of our courses, but of course it is a discipline specific presentation course. And this is Ken Highland, he worked for a long time in Hong Kong. He said ESP should focus primarily on specific language skills and genres of particular disciplines. So, for example, we have the IEEE, which is the International Engineering Association, or or Journal of American Chemical Society, the American Chemical Society. We have physics and we have bioscience and we have mathematics and so on. So how do we tailor this very general presentation, course outline or design for a specific discipline? And this is what I want you to discuss for, for 10 minutes. So the important question here is how do presentations vary across disciplines? So do they first? <laughs> if they don't vary across disciplines, then it's fine. We can just like teach one thing to every student in every class and we're all good. But I'm already going to say they vary. The presentations do vary across disciplines and it's important to know how and where and why and then tailor the class accordingly. So I want you to discuss this for the next 10 minutes. So how does the audience of presentations vary depending on the discipline? How does the purpose of presentations vary? How does the organization and format vary? How does the language vary? And then how does the setting of the delivery vary? So in groups of, I think actually four, not three, but in groups of four, I'd like you to discuss these questions for 10 minutes, two minutes per, two minutes per item, two minutes on audience, two minutes on purpose, two minutes on organization, two minutes on language, two minutes on setting. Think about first, in the first minute, think about what the variations are, okay? In the first minute, think about what kind of variations could be in the audience or the purpose. And then in the second minute, think about how this would impact your course design or how you would adapt your courses to introduce this possible variation. 
Okay, so I'm imagining a class where you, you've got like mathematicians in the classroom. So how do you consider that context or a context where you have multiple students from multiple disciplines in the same room and you have to understand and adapt the class depending on these different factors. Okay, so Lillian, if you could help me here. So I would like everybody to break out into a group of four, four people, four participants, and it could be three, but maximum four. And then in that group, go through each of these aspects and consider how it varies and what they could be do. And just, um, I'll show you, um, if we go to the Google Drive, you'll see I have a little file here called Discussing Variation Across Disciplines. And um, you should see this little form here that you can use to help you in the discussion. Yeah. Is that okay? I'll, I'll put the link there uh, in the chat. As well. Okay, yeah. great. Yeah. Okay, so, so I'm gonna I'm gonna give you all everybody ten minutes, and uh, hope you can see my little timer here. I'm gonna give ten minutes, and I will um, I will call everybody back after ten minutes or so. But in those ten minutes, discuss these uh, five points. And then it, when you come back, I'm going to ask one group to kind of summarize what they felt. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm creating the room. Okay. Thank you. I'll stop sharing for a moment. Everybody, everybody okay? You all understand what to do? Kira, okay? Yeah, great. Uh, great. Okay, see you soon. 10 minutes, everybody. And thank you for coming back. <laughs> um, breakout rooms can be the, the, the source of people leaving and never returning. So it's great to see your faces. Letty, I can see you there. That's nice. <laughs> and, and May and uh, Kira and everybody. Great. Okay. So um, it is coming up to one hour. So I, just, I do want to um, have a break in a moment. But let's just uh, briefly talk about these, this discussion. Um, do we have a, a, so a representative from the group that can briefly talk about uh, one main uh, interesting point made in the discussion. Can somebody say anything that they thought was interesting from the 10 minute discussion we just had? Otherwise I'll nominate somebody. Wow, nobody wants to speak. It's just like a regular classroom. Yeah, you can. You're speaking, Mark. So what did you discuss in your group? Did anyone... Well, well, one thing, one thing you have to realize that in presentations that nothing, none of the, none of the areas are standalone is they're all interconnected and they all Very good play point. on each other. And, you know, you have to focus on each because if you don't, then, you know, your presentation is going to fail in one act, one, one area or another. Very, There's... very good point. Excellent. Wow. That was so, that was short and very, very good. Yeah. This, um, disciplines do vary. And I'll talk a little bit about those after the break. But um, as Mark is saying, they all kind of overlap as well. And there are some of these core abilities that underlie all of these different disciplines. So as I said earlier, I think it's really good to go to the presentation, see it, if it's in mathematics or physics or, or nursing or medicine, and then immediately you get an idea of, oh, that's similar to this, that's similar to this, oh, that's different, oh, that's, that's different, but it's not very good, it's not very effective. And then you can talk to the students with experience of actually what they, they are doing in their own in their own work. Okay, so it is an hour, an hour has passed. So let's have a break for five minutes. Then we'll come back and I'll talk a little bit more about this discipline difference and how I address that in my own teaching and maybe give you some ideas. So shall we have a break for five minutes?